Um, so this patient did well and then uh, continued to follow up routinely with his um, uh, uh, oncologist uh, and surgeon uh, at routine follow-ups with scans and blood tests and including uh, uh, CEA levels and continued to feel well except you know he, he kept on complaining of some uh, fatigue and diarrhea. Now come April 2015 uh, the uh, patient shows up to his uh, medical oncologist office, gets through a routine evaluation. Um, his CA uh, was up, was starting to get elevated. Uh, so that certainly got the oncologist concerned. Uh, so the oncologist sends the patient to get first a scan, which showed suspicious lesions in the liver. And then that was followed by a PET, a CT scan, which suggested essentially that uh, there was indeed disease recurrence with uh, pet avid uh, lesions in the liver and multiple lobes of the liver, multiple small lesions. Uh, thankfully, there was no cancer anywhere else. So this, the liver was the only area that lit up on the, on the PET scan, suggesting that uh, this is now metastatic recurrent uh, disease. Um, uh, the oncologist, along with the surgeon, decided that uh, uh, a biopsy that would confirm that this is indeed uh, cancer originating from the colon coming back in the liver uh, and so a biopsy was performed which essentially confirmed that this is uh, adenocarcinoma consistent with colon primary confirming that his cancer is indeed back and back in the liver. Uh, so the patient at that time uh, uh, was uh, started on infusional 5-FU with oxaliplatin, so what we call Folfox, along with uh, bevacizumab. Unfortunately, the patient did not have mutation testing for his tumor. I think today it, it's critical that all patients uh, who get diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer, and this would recurrence in colon cancer stage 4, that they have to have mutation testing from the get-go. It helps with essentially planning the whole uh, treatment uh, of the patient, uh, patient. And, and will help us take decisions sometimes for some patients in the first line. Uh, so at least what needs to happen is a RAS, all RAS mutations, a BRAF mutation, and MSI testing. And why it's important. So RAS mutations tell us whether there's a mutation in RAS that would adamantly be a patient who would never be eligible for an EGFR inhibitor like cetuximab or penetumumab. And so that's important to, to, to keep in mind. It also tells us a little bit about the overall prognosis. So those that have RAS mutations tend to do a little bit worse. Now in the presence of no mutation, patients would be eligible at some point for EGFR inhibitors and we'll have that discussion. Uh, but also we have to test those patients for a BRAF uh, mutation. And BRAF is also prognostic, but also could alter how we treat those patients. So for example, uh, if the patient had a rash wild type BRAF mutated tumor, then rather than treating those patients with a full Fox bevacizumab regimen, this is where we have data that would suggest that full Fox Siri plus bevacizumab. This is young patient, so a more aggressive triplet regimen plus bevacizumab is likely to make a bigger difference than Folfox plus bevacizumab. So it would be, I think, important to do that. Um, now comes the MSI testing. Now it's mandatory, I think, and it's now in the NCCN guidelines and other guidelines in our institution. We do it across the board for all stages from one to four MSI testing. And it's important for multiple reasons. One, if it's high, especially with a patient with a family history, it may give us a hint that this cancer is driven by the genetics of the patient. And that has implications not just for the patient, but also for the family um, of, uh, of, of the patient, you know, earlier screenings, etc. So I think it's important to do at least those tests. Now there is an argument also in some, uh, especially large institutions like ours, that we should do uh, a more expanded testing beyond just RAS, RAF, and MSI look at HER2, look at FGFR, look at a long number of different um, uh, targets. That's because in, 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 in institutions like ours, we also have a menu of different trials that have different target therapies. I wouldn't recommend it across the board, frankly, at this point of time, in the absence of clinical trials that would be available to patients. 
but in institutions like ours and larger institutions as well, I think it would make sense to expand it even beyond the minimum required right now would be RAS, BRAF, and MSI for all patients. I think that has to be obtained before any treatment decisions have to be made.